Hi there. Today we're going to show you a video on assembling the Junior. So what we did was we unpackaged it and we laid all our pieces around, went through our bolt packages, checked our instruction, uh, our instructions that came with it and it showed us the tools that we needed and the bolts and nuts and hardware that are going to be in our, uh, in our package. So a uh, good thing to do would be go over that, check your instructions, make sure you got the right tools, make sure you got the right hardware and uh, after that unpackage your, your feeder and place the floor face down. Once you got that done, we're going to install the legs. Now the legs can go, the legs can go in two different positions. For horses, we recommend install your legs at this angle and you put your bolts through these two holes. For goats or sheep, any other exotics, we recommend installing it at this height. So that height is going to give you 16 inches off the ground. Uh, and that is how we're going to install it in this video. So if you got any questions, you want to see how the installation goes at 27 inches, just check out the XL assembly video. Okay, so we're going to start by going to our hardware bag, grabbing eight two and a half inch by half inch bolts, and they will they will go through the skid and through the leg. Whenever you're assembling these feeders, it's always nice to have someone to give you a hand. Uh, so I got my, my buddy Alex here and he's going to help me assemble this feeder. Uh, and it'll just go twice as fast and be a lot easier on the back, alright? Now that we got our four bolts on each end started, we need to put our leg braces in. Okay, so our leg braces, they look like this. You're going to have two different ones, you're going to have basically a left hand and a right hand leg brace, okay? So, for two different ones. And uh, they only go on one way. This piece that, that's notched out here, the, the end that has the notched out piece, it goes through the leg on the outside. Okay? So you could install both of those through the leg on the outside and then install a bolt at the bottom. Flip the floor on its side and we're going to start to install the roller frame and the uh, handle frame. Okay, so there's fork pockets on this side and on this side it's solid. So on any hay boss feeder, the fork pockets go on the handle side. Okay, so you look at your frame, you got your, your roller frame here fork pockets are on the handle side. So we're going to grab the handle side, we're going to put it into position and we're going to need to grab our three quarter inch by inch and a half bolts with nuts, three quarter inch by inch and a half bolts, two on each side with nuts, our gusset, okay so our gusset just sturdies everything up and how this works is you'll see there's two holes in the floor already. They go through these two and your big bolts are going to go through these holes, through your skid and in turn then through your gusset and we're going to tighten everything up. Okay, so with, with a hand I'll hold this in place. Okay, so let it lean down like that for the first one, then you'll come do the exact same thing on the roller side. Okay, so now that you got one bolt started on each side, that's going through your roller frame, through your skid and holding your gusset in place, now it's time to put your second bolt in. And how we do that is, I'm just going to tilt the floor until that hole lines up. Okay, we got four bolts in for the end frames. 
Now we gotta get our floor bolts in. You got your four uh, gusset bolts in. Go ahead, get one guy to hold it while the other person tightens it up. Okay, so now we got our, our end frame bolts in place. We got our floor bolts through the gusset in place. We have all our leg bolts and our leg brackets bolted and in place. Everything's hand tight. Uh, the only thing we have left to do is to install two roller base bolts and I will turn the feeder and show you where those go. Okay, so in the base of this roller frame, there's two holes. And all you gotta do is throw a 3 8 by one inch bolt through it with the nut on the back side. And what that does is secures sturdies and squares your roller end. So, so now I got all my bolts started uh, for the base and the skid. I'm gonna go ahead and start by putting a square on my roller side. Okay, so I'm gonna get ready to tighten, or sorry, my handle side. I'm gonna get ready to tighten my handle side, but before I do that, there might be a little bit of slop in the bolts, and I just wanna make sure that the handle side is square. The roller side is held square with the two nuts, that, the two bolts that we just put in. So you can proceed now and tighten the rest of the bolts that you have installed so far. Okay, we got everything tightened up now. Next step is the roof. We need four half inch by one inch bolts with flange nuts and flat washers and we need the roof. So I'll grab the roof, you grab the hardware. Okay, so we got the bottom side of the roof. Okay. You got your two holes on the sides. That's gonna go to one frame or the other. How you know which frame it goes to is your roof bars here. So these roof bars and snaps here are made to connect to your net, your top net cable after you loaded your feeder, right? And that just stops uh, animals from being able to pull your net down. It runs your nets nice and parallel and stops them from tangling. They're very important, but they gotta be installed right. And the way to know if you got them installed right is they basically make like a arrowhead. So how to know you install them is this is on the underside and the arrowhead points to the rollers, okay? So I see that my handle side is over here and my rollers are over here. So I have to tip my roof like this. And I gotta make sure they're on the underside. So I'm gonna hold the roof for Alex and Alex is gonna put in his first bolt. And make sure you put a washer in between the roof and the frame. So it goes frame, washer, roof. Okay, so now we got our two bolts uh, in on both sides of the roof. And we're just gonna lift up our frames and that will drop the roof so that it's uh, sitting perfectly vertical, okay? So 
Alex, you lift up that frame, I'll lift up this frame. Now you can line up your, your last uh, bolt on each side. Make sure you put a washer in between the frame and the roof. Okay, so now we got our, our four bolts in the roof. We're gonna tighten the roof and we're gonna flip the feeder on its skids. Okay, right side up. Okay, we're almost done. Now, next step we have to do is put our tool tube. So this is your tool tube. It gets mounted on your roller end. Okay. And it has two holes at the top and it has one hole at the bottom. Okay, so you got two holes at the top that are gonna go through these two holes and one slotted hole at the bottom, which you're gonna put a washer on your bolt. It's gonna be a 5 16 It's gonna be a 5 16 by two inch bolt at the top. And a 5 16 by one inch bolt at the bottom. And put your washer on the bottom. Okay, once you got them started, you can go ahead and tighten them up with a half inch socket and wrench. And make sure not to tighten them too much because this is plastic and uh, you just want to be nice and easy on it. Okay, so in this tool tube, we send uh, hog, ring, hog ring pliers, we send you some hog rings, some zip ties, and that goes in your tool tube, okay? Now, In your net, when you, when you unwrap your net, you're gonna get a chunk of net, and you can put that little chunk in your tool, to, your tool tube as well, and that's for net repairs as well. Go ahead, throw a knife in there, and then you'll always have all the tools you ever need when you're out feeding your horses, and if you ever have to do a small repair on your net, cut the twines on your bales, whatever you gotta do, everything's accessible, and you don't have to walk all the way back to the barn, just to find your knife. Okay, so next step is installing the net. Pull your Velcros off of your rollers. That's what's gonna retain your nets to your rollers. Okay, you grab your first net, you unroll it, and you look at it and you see you got an angle iron on one end, and you got an aluminum square tubing on the other end. Okay, so the square tubing is gonna be your handle, so it goes on your handle end, and your angle iron is gonna be what attaches to your roller. So, here, this is the tricky part. They only go on one way, and you have to Install your nets between your roller and your frame. So you fish them between your roller and the frame, and the frame. And you'll notice that the angle, or the cable, is attached to this angle iron only on one side of the angle iron. So it's got to be attached to the inside of the angle iron, just like this one. You see that? There's nothing here, but on the inside of this angle iron, the inside of the feeder the angle iron, or the cable is there. So that's the way it's gotta be. If, it's, if your cable is on the outside, then you're gonna have to just flip end for end. Just flip your net end for end and that's what's gonna fix the problem. Okay, so fish your nets through your, your feeder. Put the bottom angle iron into the bracket that's on the roller. Okay, then you pull out the middle Pull out the middle and insert that into the top bracket. Hook up your handle.
hook up your handle and then kind of divide your slack. Divide the, your slack in your net among the whole angle iron and then stick your Velcro back on. Stick your Velcro back on and that will ensure that your net can never come out. Okay, so let's do the same on the other side. Nets are on, next step we just have to pull our bolts, our preloading bolts out. I'd get someone just to hold, put tension on this net, I'll undo the bolt and then when he, when he or she lets go of the net, it's going to wind itself up. So very important, this could be a handy little tool, this bolt. Whenever you got any work to do on your net or replace a net, flip a net, uh, anything you want to do. Keep these, keep these bolts, put them in your tool tube. These roller locks should always be engaged and they should always ratchet. The only time that you, you pull them back and disengage them, pull them back and down on this end, is when you're loading. That will allow you to pull your nets out and, and wrap your net all around the bale. After you're done loading the bale, just engage the lock, make the lock, horizontal and what that does is only allows your net to roll up and not come backwards so a bale can't fall out, horses can't push it, pull it, scratch up against it so it basically just locks it up there in place so whenever you leave your feeder just make sure these locks are in the down position horizontal position well there you have it enjoy your new feeder and I look forward to hearing from you.